think I was really bad at certain work, and I realized I was pretty good in other work. But um, I found it very difficult to follow particular drawings or particular um, guidelines. And I realized I was really good at improv improvisation. Whenever I managed to break something, I would be really good to fix it again and find a new way of fixing it. And that somehow became quite a strong part of my work to work quite spontaneously um, with object, less conceptually, still, still having an overall concept of what we're trying to achieve, but I think um, as a designer one tends to be very um, kind of um, concept-based and before you actually do something you want to make sure that every detail is kind of somehow resolved. And that can lead to a slightly bit of um, non-imagination sometimes, bluntness. And you, yeah, somehow forget how to respond to situations. So a lot of my work is kind of responding to a situation that I put myself into by either giving myself a framework or a particular method. Um, like in this case here at exhibition, working with craftspeople. They have a very different perception of um, shape and form and design. So suddenly you collaborate with someone who has a diff very different aesthetic values also concept. And you have to somehow improvise and you have to um, work quite spontaneously. And also because you're, you're using um, furniture that's found here, it's really different furniture than what you find in Italy or in England. Yeah. So it's kind of responding to the place, responding to the people, and yeah, create somehow a new a new object out of that. Well, obviously I come from a furniture background and an apprenticeship in cabinet making when I was 14 and then went into art and sculpture but somehow um, I I do like the applied you know, aspect of a piece of furniture, something that can be shared by people in an everyday situation, uh, something that you you somehow need to to live, to have a table and chairs. Um, and yeah, so I quite like the everyday domesticity of it and appliedness of it. Um, I think I started on the track of sculpture. I, I love paintings. I've always been more interested in paintings and sculpture, but I ended up painting f things with a bland background and I realized I was making sculpture with paintings. and. Um, I really like working with my hands too, and I like, I think I got taught at the kitchen table really, we always had Lego and Fimo and Play-Doh and sand pits, and so, and gluing things together, and I really, really love making things. And when I first went to England, I had very little money as well, so I think that's why I've always made things about this size, that I could make in a bedroom or not in a normal studio situation. And. Yeah, that's why I continue, because I, I like having an intuitive sort of follow what I'm doing and I love working with different people too. So I work a lot with glass blowers and ceramicists and weavers and furniture makers, which is how I met Martina. And for me, they don't have personalities. They're sort of, like they've got no eyes, they've got no eyeball and no pupil. And so to me, they're quite shell-like and quite, not bland, but they're almost robotic and, um, the, the, you know, the sculptures are not people and, and to me that removes them from characters. I don't know why I want to make these things without characters or, because sometimes they are people, like I try and make a sculpture of Martino or of friends or family and they definitely all have a look which, um, I never really realised how their postures came about and I was looking through a lot of family photos and we all sit in the same, like all my family have the same funny posture and I realised they, they do have that and they're always quite scrawny sort of beings. And, and I've tried and work with different peoples as well, so very Japanese looking, um, I looked at a lot of no masks and Mexican sculpture I've looked at a lot. Indian sculpture, especially the um, the bronzes with the amazing fingers, and um, I've looked at a lot of photos of Maori people as well.
which I think are really beautiful photography. And so I sort of pull the stuff together like a magpie and then look at it for the first 10 minutes when I'm making a work and then I sort of forget about it and let it run where it goes. Mm. But we met because I wrote, well, I met Carl because I wrote to him, because I loved his jewellery and it looked to me very much like he was making work in exactly the same way I was, quite intuitively, quite quickly and using found objects and, and changing them to make something really precious out of something that would have been a bit boring or, or sort of out of fashion. And Martino exactly the same way. I wrote to Martino and said, I love your work. I'd seen some of his 100 chairs things and I really wanted to work with him and I really already had in mind the idea of working with Carl and Martino and I together because I could see that we all work just weirdly similarly. And with this show, it really, it, you, you could almost think it was one person, I think. Yeah, I think, um, what I said earlier on, I'm, I'm very interested in domestic kind of um, living situations. Not as an interior designer, but somehow interested in how people live and how, what do you need kind of for, for living? And of course, you need friendship, but then I think soon afterwards you, you need something to blemish your house and to make it kind of a bit more personal and a bit more kind of your own mm. home. Um, so this is to me a kind of a perfect scenario of, a, of the completeness of how you cannot just uh, live with design pieces but also with art, with jewellery. Yeah, the jewellery is quite nice because it sort know, of throws so it because yeah. art and design and yeah. furniture design sort of go together yeah. quite easily and then the jewellery is quite like and jewellery? Yeah. Like, why jewellery? Like, why not, you know, um, why not a lighting design or something? Yeah. So, I, I quite like it because it's quite daft as well. Yeah. And also, kind of, it looks a bit like it's actually everything came from a skip somehow and then re kind of juggled and re composed. But precious too. But then precious yeah. again. I mean, not, not from a skip because it's kind of. Um, but from a skip because some people didn't see the beauty in what they actually thrown out and suddenly it's kind of recomposed, re it looks different and polished again. So even like a really um, old, fairly looking laminate, you know. Or your tree stumps, which are yeah, just tree really stumps. tree stumps, but somehow um, they become quite... Yeah, so... And, and maybe the title, in a way, you know, the exam means you know the wholeness and the work. You know, the all over kind of really puts it together is, is you know it's the whole work, the whole over together, and, and the overlapping, over crossing of those three kind of you know arts, craft, and design. And we added hand into it because yeah. Gesamtkunstwerk is a well-known phrase. Yeah. Or is it a word in German? Gesamtkunstwerk is you know it's the it's if an artist somehow um, creates an overall work that is not just painting or sculpture, it could be architecture, it could be music, it could be involving everything that, that surrounds life. But then adding hand adding really hand brought it back into craft. Into because craft, so. in New Plymouth is such a craft yeah. place yeah. with potters and weavers yeah. and... So, um, yeah, I think it's been a... Um, I, mean, I, I don't think we quite realised yet <laughs> what we actually made. <laughs> Because we made it, a lot. We made a lot and we worked with other people, so it just seems like it's all coming together now. And also the, the composition starts to work now, you know, also the way you display it. You know, you suddenly put um, the jewellery or the sculpture, you know, on top of a piece of furniture and it's something. Yeah, from, from quite sort of homey looking, it's, it's starting to look a bit more styled and yeah. balanced. And so the title of, the, of our show is called Gesamt. Kunsthandwerk, meaning Gesamtkunstwerk would be the, um, the artist creating the, over, the overall, the wholeness of a, of a over of a work. And we added the, the hand to it. And hand work means craft in German. So that kind of relates to the overness of art design and um, craft. So some of the crafts we worked with were Nick Brandon, who I've known since I was a child. He's a local potter who's actually not potting now, but he helped us throw some work, which was amazing to see on his kick pedal. And um, Pam Robinson, who's a felter, who helped Martina with some chairs. She made some really modernist sort of yeah. triangular felting. And um, Lynn Mackay, 
McKay, Mackay, who's a, um, a, a weaver, who we saw her work in a shop and I just fell in love with it and had to track her down. She's been amazing, she made an extra long rug, but of her own design, because her designs are so beautiful. And, and you were Peter, Peter, Peter and Jan, mm. Peter Wells and Jan Kowalski, mm -hmm. um, who are both wood turners and part of the wood turning guild or, or association, Taranaki. So they told me how to, or I've, I've done some wood turning before, but they kind of refreshed my, my skills and taught me new skills. And, and also the wood here is quite And different. also, yeah, I tried to uh, introduce me a bit to native New Zealand woods. Um, it's very exciting. And mm. So it's very much about, you know, us giving new, new formal and new aesthetic kind of inputs and trying to somehow bastardize a little bit the, the craft, you know. Yeah, because Pam normally yeah, works with kind of very small pieces. Infested somehow almost with... Yeah, because Pam's pieces are yeah. really tiny yeah. little scarves and she's making, she made big yeah. pieces for us, you know, which was really yeah. like, okay, I'll see if my husband can help me because she knew how heavy they'd be. Yeah. And I think he had to help her lift the things out yeah. of the bath because they're just yeah. sodden with water. Yeah. And Lynn, yeah, she's, she was just super yeah. up for experimenting. Yeah. Kind of, I think you know a lot of times the craft, um, craft can be very much a particular type of aesthetics and and very individual, of course. But um, but lots of rules, it, I think. Lots of rules and craft. and it kind of there's this parallel life of, 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 of parallel kind of work that's happening in the craft world and the art world and, and the design world, world. design world, yeah. Yeah. And, and the jewelry world. The jewelry, so they kind of these parallel worlds that there's few people that they cross it, you know, to one side or the other, and. I think there is not a lot of cross fertilization across the board. You know, from, if you think of jewelry, design, art, and craft, it, it, there is not a lot of common denominator. Even though there should be a lot, because all three, and all four, work in a work, similar material, um, similar skills, similar types of people doing it. Yeah, I mean, maybe those intentions are similar. It's to create, you know, new exciting work that people kind of want to live with, and and, and also I think a lot of us do it because we need to use our hands and yeah. like to be using our hands and all the time. Probably better expressing our hands mm. rather than maybe um, writing an essay about our work. And sort of you could probably, you know, create a, create quite a good social cultural kind of um, reading of, of of a society of, of a culture by looking what people throw away. It's a bit like, tell me what you throw away and I'll tell you who you are. Um, and I think there was a particular type of vernacular and, and language to, to, to those pieces that are actually being discarded and thrown out or maybe ended the life cycle or at least uh, ended maybe a new one, become now collectibles, some of the pieces. But um, there's definitely a particular language here in terms of design, and I think what's interesting is not just that there is somehow the Victorian, you know, old kind of nice wooden chair, um, kind of windsor chair. There is not just the, the modernist kind of chair or the plastic chair, um, but there's also the kind of um, kind of Polynesian, Australasian kind of influence in, in, in design. And I think that's. For me, as a designer coming from Europe and being formed there, you know, I lived there. Very interesting. Yeah, Martina calls the formica, which is for us the basic formica. You call it power formica, yeah. which I think is so cute. It's like that's not power, but it's so nice that you call it that. Well, it has a kind of you know slightly um, pearly, um, yeah, or water. Maybe maybe it tries to kind of imitate you know kind of sea water a bit of. Um, reflection and I've never seen this anywhere in, in, in Europe so this is definitely a product that's especially been designed mm. for the market here mm. you know, in the 50s and 60s and it was um, incredibly popular because it's everywhere incredibly popular yeah. and, and everyone recognizes and because maybe there's also obviously less design that was manufactured in New Zealand because it's a much smaller market there are more pieces that are recognize, recognizable so you know people here so there are little, you know like those 10 chairs that everyone recognizes and and so it's interesting to me to to play with them and to kind of twist them and 
you know, kind of throw them back in again once they left the life cycle and you know end up in a skip. So 